Hello and welcome to this Business Central video. Today I want to go through how to set up email in Business Central. So this is the fourth part in a series that I've been doing on making the most of your Business Central trial. So we've been through creating a trial, um, then we went through how we could access that trial using the different methods. Um, then we went through how to assign different the, the licenses to different users and how to pull them into Business Central so you can get all the users in your organization using Business Central. Uh, so now I wanna go through how to set up email because that might be something that is really important um, for you to test to see how email uh, looks and works in Business Central. So if we go into Business Central and here I am logged in as the admin user and there's plenty of different ways you can set up email but what I'm gonna go through is the assisted setup because it's a pretty good window to show anyway. So in here, these are all the different wizards that we can, that are straight out of the box that can help you to configure Business Central. So we've got things like setting up that, entering your details, and then down here we've got set up email. So if I click on that, it says I've already completed it, but do I wanna run it again? I say yes, and it gives me the wizard. So if I go next, and I've got three different methods, three different connectors uh, for email in Business Central. So the two I'm gonna look at are the top two, you can also set up SMTP. So if you was using um, Google or anything like that, you can set up that. You can even set it up for uh, Office as well. So you just click that and apply the settings and fill in the details. But I'm going to concentrate on these. I'm going to go for this one first, which is current user. So what is current user? So if I add this connector, it means that users can send out emails using their own email accounts. So um, they'll have to have an exchange license, but that's the only thing. So if we see how that works, it's as easy as just clicking next, next, finish, and that's it all set up. So if I go back there and have a look at what's actually happened, if I search the email accounts page, we can see here that we've got the current user set up. Now I don't have to set up every single user in here. Having that as current user just means when anybody uh, who's got a Business Central license, who can log into Business Central and they've got an exchange license, can now email. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If I go to say customers, and then if I uh, say choose Alpine Ski House, and if I go send email here, I can, if I just change that email address, I can just send an email, say about our did you receive the email, the invoice, sorry. Thanks. And now when I click send here, you can see that it's coming from my, from my email address. If I nip over to another user who's got in this tenant, so say Adele, and if I go customers, uh, same one, Alpine Ski House, say send email, and I was gonna send the same email, you can see that this current user is gonna be sent as Adele. So if I just do the same here and actually click send, see exactly what I mean, invoice, please pay the invoice, thanks. And if I click send email, now I could have sent that from my own Outlook, but the beauty of sending it from Business Central is it's stored in here on their account. If I go to, I think it's related history, sent emails, this email is here. So if you ever want, your colleagues can say, you know, when did you, we sent you an email last week. If, it, if Adele just sent it from an own email box, you'd never be able to kind of prove that, but you can go into the system here to see it. So that is setting up um, email for current user. So if we now go back to admin user, I'll just cancel that and discard that and go back to that email accounts page. Again, I could go to assisted setup and because now I want to set up shared mailboxes. So if I now go to email accounts and go new, add an email account, and I'm back to my wizard, and this time I'm gonna set up shared mailboxes. So what is a shared mailbox? So that is where you want, might want to send invoices out or statements from a shared mailbox, like account receivable at then yourdomain.com, rather than coming from my email address, or in this case, Adele's email address, then it comes from that group email address. Um, the, the common ones to set up are like accounts receivable at, and also accounts payable at for like remittances and things like that. So we'll set up, set up a shared mailbox. So I click there, click next. 
and it prompts me now for the account name and email address. Now, before I can set this up, I've got to go into the Microsoft Admin Center and create that shared mailbox. So we'll quickly do that now. So I'll go into here, I'd just Google Microsoft Admin Center, I would click the box, and at some point I'll be able to log in then to my Admin Center. And if you remember from the previous video of assigning licenses, this is where we come into our active users and assign the licenses. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under Teams and Groups and I'm going to go Shared Mailboxes. Now I've already got one for Accounts Receivable, so I'm going to add one for Accounts Payable. And I'm going to call that Accounts Payable. At this and click Save. Now that's not all we have to do we then have to give the users access to be able to send from that shared mailbox so again this is administration that you have to do outside of business central so you'd probably get somebody in it to do this uh, but once that's set up i then can go add members to my shared mailbox but what i'm going to do is i'm going to do it via i drill down on accounts payable and down here in the mailbox permissions i need to go to send as permissions and i'm going to add my Adele, Alex, who I've already set up, and my admin. And then go back one. And then I'm going to do send on behalf as well. And I think it's only send on behalf that you need for Business Central, but I tend to do them both. Add. And there we go. We've got these three people that can send on behalf of this. So now I've got that set up. All I've got to do is if I grab that mailbox name again, there it is, I just want to copy that. So I'm just going to copy uh, and then close that down and then go to back to Business Central. I'll just, the account name is Accounts Payable, oops, lazy. And the mailbox is that. And if I go next, finish, job done. So now I've got a mailbox, a shared mailbox called Accounts Payable. So if I now was to go to say vendors, and if I was to say go to Graphic Design Institute, when I click send email now, it's defaulting to the current user because in my email account, that's the default one. But what I can do is I can click the three dots now and choose Accounts Payable. And now I can send an email from this, um, I, I can send an email straight from this mailbox now, like so, and then click send, and that's now been sent. And if I go to, I think it's the same place, related, history, oh, is it in here? Sent email, there we go. And you can see that this was sent from this account, um, and that's that. So, those are the two different mailing methods that I wanted to go through. So one being current user. So you set that up once and then everybody who's got an exchange license can email it of Business Central using their own mailbox. And then the other way using the shared mailboxes, um, which are things like accounts payable, accounts receivable, um, to send things like invoices uh, on the sales side statements and on the purchase side like remittances. And one thing I didn't show is on those shared mailboxes then you can create things called email scenarios so you don't have to if you were sending out bulk invoices you can add that as a default so it comes from accounts receivable that's one thing i didn't touch on but you can do that as well so that kind of wraps up this video i uh, hope you enjoyed it um, we will be more to come now doing things like uh, setting up uh, sandboxes and doing having maybe having a look at some of the actual functionality that is essential for when you want to start using Business Central and testing it out. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Thanks.